Hey, what's up? JR 200, Fall Semester 2021. Today is uh, August 29th. It's Sunday, and uh, I'll be sending this lecture out to you guys tomorrow. Um, uh, tough times in New Orleans right now. Um, my heart goes out to the, the you know, proud people of Louisiana. You know, if you've ever been to New Orleans, it's a great city. Um, there's there's no more friendly, welcoming people than the people of New Orleans. Um, your co-instructor, my wife, um, sadly, she you know, she has family connection there. She grew up in New Orleans, and uh, her dad and her brother live in New Orleans, and they actually evacuated um, all the way to Memphis, Tennessee. Um, so this thing's a real deal, and I really feel sorry for them right now. And uh, yeah, we have a lot, a lot of tragedy going on <laughs> in our country with. Uh, um, you know, the, the infection and, and hospitalization and death rates of COVID-19 in many different parts of the country, uh, a lot of suffering. So we have a lot to be uh, grateful for. Okay, so um, for those of you who are new to this class, um, this is the kind of lecture that we do. Um, I post it on YouTube. Um, uh, for those of you that are new to this class, you, you need to do a little catch up. And the best way to do catch up is to scroll on down here and, and look at and read um, the announcement page. So we communicate routinely through these announcement pages. This lecture is going to go out to you via the announcement. And you'll see later on, we also post it in the body of the course, which is um, the weekly assignments you see right here. All right. Um, I'm not going to go through everything, but uh, if you're new to the class, here it is right here, how to get an A in JRO 200. So you just click on this YouTube video like this, okay? And I'm tracking the respondents, okay? We just, boom. Okay, so it takes you, to, for me, I've already watched this YouTube lecture a few times. So it took to me to where I was at. I could always go back here and go to asynchronous, the beginning. okay? And, and you see that I'm explaining everything, okay? Um, you can also expand and go full screen, you know, right here, as we see right so, okay? Yeah, it's up to you, all right? So, okay, all right. Um, and then this right here was the lecture that I did last week, okay? And we're, we're going through this section. That, um, it's a, an amazing report that was put together by our National Institute of Health and the World Health Organization. and actually many, many different uh, global government agencies that came together. The report was done in 2007. It's, uh, there has not been a specific update that covers the spectrum like this one. We will refer to other parts that are a little bit more current, but it's an amazing kind of intro to the, all the consequences of uh, having older people worldwide. Uh, age, you know, what happens when we have aging um, at the, uh, the country level, societal level, and really how it impacts you individually. So that's what this is all about. So I, 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 this first part, you know, was a little bit longer lecture, and, um, and, uh, and the rest will not be as long, okay? This right here um, um, lays out, as you can see in the assignments, you know, what to expect. This is in your syllabus. So, do, you know, to, to, of course, access this, you click on syllabus right here. This is the student view, okay? And, um, um, and Julia will keep you going and updating you. Now, we sent this out earlier, but there was there were so many people that added that we sent it out again. Uh, so I'm not going to send it out a third time. And here, you know, Julia lays out, you know, some really, really cool nuts and bolts framework of the class, okay? Fight on ski, okay? All right, so that's what that's all about. All right, very cool. Um, check, compare your syllabus. Um, it's reiterated over and over again here. You see all these these timelines here, these dates. You, um, I encourage you to just get out your phone, okay? And you enter it into your calendar uh, with um, an alert, so you stay on top of it, okay? This class, it's pretty easy to get an A in this class, you know? Um, but you just, you can't fall behind. You have to communicate with us. Julia is on it, okay? So you email her if you have any problems. And you just know that you have right here, boom, weekly assignments, okay? So you calendar these written assignments, and I'm going to give you lots of information on, on how to do these things. They are awesome assignments, by the way, okay? I'll refer back to them to, in today's lecture a little bit. And um, a couple of um, total multiple choice um, uh, exams right here that are you know easy peasy. And then, but every week, what you're going to do is going to start right here, okay? So you check the announcements if you're, if you're new to the class, like I said, all right, 
you go in here and this is how you start your week okay all right this gives you the details right here on how th um, this weekly assignment is laid out okay so check it out okay um this was week one you see everything is uh, uh gives you the, the the expectations of getting things done by date this first um set of assignments so we're going to see that for week one we click on it right here okay i'm in student view so this is the, again the lecture that i posted again it's it's redundant but here's the how to get an a and here's the first week assignment lecture um this is what you do is you click on this and i'll show you how you do that in a second you download the reading and then at the same time you open the quiz and you and that way you can just compare the quiz to what you're going through in your reading and just boom and the quiz is just five multiple choice questions you can do this together we don't care there's a random questions 30 questions so everybody's going to get five different questions okay um and then there's a discussion okay right here and so we're giving you a prompt and what you do um, when you go into discussion okay i'll just give you a, a feeling for what it looks like for the people that are newbies here's the you know grace just posted right here james posted okay so you do one primary uh discussion and um and that gives you um uh roughly about a 75 percent of the credit and then and then you do three more posts um on your friend's website you know pages see right here boom so Ethan's done it bam so so you do all right here elizabeth has really gotten into it okay that's awesome check out um uh, uh maria okay that's what we want you to do okay and that's how you get the full credit all right so i'm going to go back to the weekly assignments okay and um and and there's you know with respect to um uh to posting in the in in, in the um uh, doing the quizzes it's in the video that i did the how-to video and then we also have this really really cool section in the course okay and um is is called Jero 200 how to folders okay if you click on that okay um beyond the video that i did there it is again okay it explains um everything it tells you how to use turn it in how to avoid plagiarism we check everything with turn it in so when you do your writing assignments um make sure you do it right how to how to post in discussion boards you click right there okay what to do if you just added Jero 200 bump 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 right there okay um Blackboard help, okay, how to look at your old quizzes, okay, and that would be something you might want to do when you're getting ready for the two exams, okay. What do you do if you get sick? Communication, communication, communication. You contact Julia, okay, and her email is listed in the syllabus, all right? All right, very cool. All right, so back to our weekly assignments, okay? So I'm going to jump right in now. So um, this one's going to close today, okay? All right, so that's where you got to get it done by midnight today. All right, um, then we go into week two, okay? I'm gonna put my video right here. And as it says right here, we go from trend five to EndNote, okay? Um, and uh, um, before we did, okay, forward to trend five, okay? So um, so we're, we're continuing on with this adventure, right? Um, I would open my quiz right now, all right? So I could just go like this, all right, I'd hit begin. All right, and I would then go through these uh, questions and size up where I'm at here, okay? What what country in Europe has the highest percentage of men age 55 to 65 who are not working possibly because of a generous public pension, all right? So we're going to see if that's in there, okay? Um, uh, which country has the highest p uh, pension expenditure as a percentage of their gross domestic product, okay? We'll check that out, okay? Um, and... Um, and then um you know on and on and on I mean, so you just have this all kind of all you know tooled up so to speak so you can look at that all right and then you know i think what i would do is um i would open the second browser all right i would just go right in this is obviously my my page right here i'm going to go into here all right so i have my quiz loaded up and now i'm just going to go back into here okay and i'm going to go right here all right boom all right so um, and then at the end of the day, you'll see that this this, uh, this discussion section right here totally complements um, what we're doing here in class in terms of, you know, my lecture here and the reading assignment. So I'm going to open up this file right here. Okay. All right. So we're going to go from scroll down here, and uh, um, you know, it's you know, last 
lecture, you know, we kind of gave you the perspective of the aging world, you know, the, the actual numbers, you know, um, the age wave, the trends that are happening, okay? Um, um, and why we have to uh, be proactive, okay? Um, you know, preparation is key, you know, whether as an individual, uh, as a society, as a total economy, okay? Because it's, it's not going away, you know, and, and so that's what this is all about, okay? And um, so we get into a full description of uh, the aging population and we, um, we look at, you know, again, global, all right? And then we hone it down from global into individual countries. Um, this is, again, showing how quickly people achieve um, this benchmark of aging population we're showing right here, going, you know, doubling of the percentage from 17 to 14%, right? Okay, then we went into um, the fact that, you know, uh, medical advances, okay? Um, you know, whether it's nutrition, hygiene, okay? Uh, you know, the fact that surgeons started wearing masks, okay? So that we, you would have... Um, uh, a, a you know a clean environment uh, in uh, in the in the operating room. Um, uh, what else we have? We have vaccinations. Yes, they do work. We have uh, antibiotics. We have um, treatments for every communicable disease, and we keep increasing the uh, and non-communicable disease. So we have treatments for cancer, treatments for um, um, you know heart disease, diabetes, on and on, and people are living longer. Okay, so it's it's a huge accomplishment. Okay, and so we kind of go through this right here. Okay, the consequence is you're going to have old, you know, um, reduced death rates, mortality rates, and rising numbers of um, the oldest old. Okay, um, they uh, those people. All right, I'm 65. The oldest old is a vulnerable population. Okay, and um, and so they're going to be. Um, uh, we're going to look at the gross domestic product. Okay, it's an economic. Uh, a earmark of productivity of a country versus the uh, the negative pull, the burden of having to pay for things like um, Social Security, uh, Medicare, things like that. Okay, and uh, we see the growth here, how it impacts them. So we'll go, we'll go through that. All right. So just the key thing is is that as people live longer and longer and longer, the likelihood of getting a non-communicable disease increases, increases. So greater likelihood of, of cancer, the biggest risk for any form of cancer other than childhood leukemias, okay, um, is age, okay? So the older you are, the more likely you are to get breast cancer, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, um, gastro, uh, gastrointestinal cancers. So age is the biggest risk factor. Diabetes, biggest risk factor is age. Um, uh, vascular disease that results in kidney disease, heart disease, um, stroke, age okay so these are non-communicable you're not they're not infectious okay you're not going to get it from somebody else it's a slow progressive disease and big big economic burden okay at, to you as an individual to your family to um, the society okay and so this is why we have um medicare and you know why we have taxes to pay for medicare okay so it goes through everything there okay um and now we have um we have this bizarre concept as you get more and more developed okay um, there's more expected of you economically so um, you work harder you work longer and and um, it takes so long to achieve what you want as a, a goal in life you're more likely to work and not have children so we're seeing population declines in the face of older and older people in those societies people living longer the younger people that we need more people to to pay for the needs and services of older people that's diminishing so that means guess what those older people aren't going away so um we're gonna have to have you guys who are younger pay more okay and that's a big big kind of economic and policy concept that you have to think about okay and we can look at different countries right there and how that works out all right so um let, let's just kind of look right here now um, you as an individual, your family structure, okay? And uh, so what, what's happening here is, you know, as, you know, life expectancy increases, you know, the, the likelihood of have, have multiple generations hanging around at the same time um, is increased, all right? So you might see, you might even have your, you know, be alive with your grandparents, your great-grandparents, okay? And, um, and so this 
kind of family dynamic of you know of responsibility and burden does creep up. Okay. Um, the other thing that happens is you know um, as people live longer and we had this changing dynamic too. Um, people in my generation didn't used to get as you know especially older than me the older baby boomers didn't get divorced as much, but, but younger, younger generations of people behind me in their 50s and 40s, divorce rates go on, up. And so you had this crazy uh, family dynamic, uh, dynamic, dynamic extended families, stepbrothers and sisters and step cousins and, and, and responsibilities therein, you know, and so that's what this is all about, okay? Um, we, um, as people live longer, um, and, and there's a, a greater likelihood of you, of you being career driven. There is, a, um, there is an emergence of people that are, do not have children. And so that's a big deal, you know, because, you know, uh, certainly, you know, my parents really depend on me to help them out in these later years when they were dependent. And, um, so at a society level, you're going to have to deal with all this and it kind of goes through. Again, this concept of which countries are aging faster and more and, and where, where the problem is. OK, so, um, you know, the canary in the coal mine, we're going to look here in figure nine at the, some of these trends right here. OK, um, so, you know, with with this with this drive for economic growth between the 50s and, and year 2000 um, in Japan, um, people um, uh, just found that they um, um, they had to choose between a career and family. And, and so the fertility rate, you know, went from that period of time to, you know, approaching two to three kids per um, individual, um, you know, that was in their 20s uh, to, um, to now, or not, not in their 20s, when they, through the, the age when you can have children. So, so the likelihood you would have children, you would have two to three kids. Sorry, I got to get that right. Um, but um, but in, in today's society, it's it's approaching one. So there's not even a replacement rate, okay, for couples. All right, they're just having one child, okay. Um, and so what has this done for um, for the older people that are now um, uh, in retirement? Okay, they're more dependent, um, and it all depends on, on what which age they are. And we look at the living arrangements, and we see this this huge transition, okay, from you know, the, again, the culture, of course, uh, in, in Japan, in Korea, in a lot of different countries that are not U.S., uh, was to have multi-generation uh, households or multi-generational um, caregiving. So, um, so you could always depend on your children and grandchildren to take care of you, okay? Um, so if we look at that, the living arrangements now uh, in Japan, going, uh, we're going to go from here 1960 to 2000. Again, this study was took forever to do. It was done in 2007, and there should be a new new one uh, coming. Um, we say that um, the likelihood of living in an institution or with a non-relative was unheard of in Japan. Okay, this would be assisted living facilities. Okay, and um, and then we see here um, the likelihood of living alone was was rare. Okay, with spouse only. Okay, um, or with your children okay uh, uh right here so you 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 see that the culture was you're gonna live with your married child because that's that was family piety right here in blue okay but you see this this dramatic transition and this has continued to go down so now it's below uh down here in the 30 percent you know 30 25 percent of 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 uh, living with your children and so um, what is the biggest growth um living alone or 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 um uh living in some type of assisted living facility if you can afford it okay um the other thing that's happening here is is you're in this you know this dependent age group okay um and um you know globally okay uh the way we support older people is through, um, you know, the entitlement programs. We have Social Security. You know, that that covers only maybe 10% of, of being able to survive financially. Um, but, but globally, a lot of countries had really, really lucrative pensions. So people would work to age 55. They would have guaranteed income. There was zero incentive to keep working. And so they would retire. And then the government would have to fund 
their lives until they're 90, 100 years old, all right? So this is, doesn't make any economic sense, but it is what it is, okay? So we've had, China's had, Japan's had, we've had this movement of, guess what, you know? We're going to um, make the cutoff, the age cutoff, where we're going to be able to um, um, access government pensions older and older. You know, for us, you know, Social Security was never intended to be um, enough to keep you going, all right? And so we put into place the, the you know, incentives that, hey, you got to start saving. And we're going to talk all about that, okay? We're going to talk about um, uh, creating your own individual retirement accounts. It's down the line. We'll talk about choosing a job, for example, uh, like a USC, uh, a big corporation that has um, either a, a 401k if you're a, 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 um, a private company or if you're a nonprofit which is supposed to USC, like 403B. We're going to learn all about these, okay? But the bottom line is we have this pattern that is expected where you're supposed to work longer, okay? Um, you know, this was right here was a canary in the coal mine, okay? Argentina had this economic collapse, and they couldn't fund their older people, okay? In Japan, we're seeing higher and higher poverty rates in the elderly, okay? Because they, they got out of the workplace too quickly, all right? So, um so we're, 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 you know, having to make, you know, societal shifts, okay? Um, if we have a decline in population, in world population in some countries, not, you know, obviously there's some, many that aren't, but in, in some countries where you're seeing shrinking, you know, like the Italy's and the Austria's, stuff like that, you have this declining workforce, okay? And what does that mean, okay? Well, that means uh, fewer people paying into the tax system, Okay, we'll talk about that later on, meaning um, you've got to pay more coming out of your check to pay for an older person's well-being through their social support, support pension system. Okay, so that's been a big issue, a big issue. Okay, and, um, and changes have to happen. Okay, all righty. We're seeing right here, we look at um, the employment rate. Okay, and this is again looking at the European Union. So... Um, the employment rate is starting to come up and up and up and up and up, okay? Um, this is 55 to 64. For us, this is a no-brainer. For a lot of countries, you know, they had um, early retirement packages, okay, where you can retire out at 55 or 50 even, okay? But there's this transition where people are starting to stay in the workplace longer. Again, this is a kind of a global report, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, where is the burden, the e big economic burdens, okay? So, um, so um, public pension incentives to leave the labor, for labor, labor force for men in 11 countries. We looked at, just looked at 11. So we see down here. So down here, um, uh, Japan, uh, the U.S., okay? We don't give, you know, so our social security system in the U.S. is, again, not supposed to be your entire basis of retirement, okay? It's enough to give you some help, okay? But we're, we're expecting to do more. Some countries out here, like Italy, okay, that was one of the questions in my quiz, you know, have the highest incentive, okay? Um, Belgium has a very high, Netherlands, France, these are, you know, these, so people basically are like, why should I work, okay? All right? Um, so we look at the percent of age and men age 55 to 65 not working. Okay, Japan is on the low end because um, they don't they don't provide the pension system. You know that is going to keep you be able to maintain your lifestyle. These guys out here are like, why should I keep working? Okay, awesome. Okay, so um, that being said, it's a huge uh, economic burden on the country. Their gross domestic problem goes. Domestic product is going like this, just like a, an anchor, okay, a ball and chain sucking the life out of them, having to pay for all these pensions because people are living longer, okay? So um, there's policy changes, okay, in terms of this social insurance system. What is the social insurance system? Our, in our country, we have Social Security and Medicare, okay? These are, you know, a, a guaranteed income of some sort based on you know, you working, you know, 10 years, okay, for Social Security. And then Medicare is, once you turn 65, that is um, the um, health insurance that is provided for you if you're no longer working, okay? So I'm going to keep working, so I'm not going to access Medicare. But most people do, all right? 
and it costs. It costs a lot of money. And so that's why we have um, uh, our taxation system. Okay, we have our our our, our uh, federal income tax that is a percentage of you of your um, of your paycheck, and we have Social Security tax. Um, so and then we have also Social Security tax and Medicare tax. All of this goes into um, um, supporting government um, programs. Okay, awesome. All right, so we can scroll down here. Okay. Okay, and again, we're looking at uh, pension expenditures. Okay, so it's it's like our social security system, but in Italy, it's far more. You know, so we might, if we're lucky, get you know twenty five grand, you know thirty grand, whatever it is. In in Italy, no, no, we're guaranteeing you an income of you know seventy or eighty grand. Okay, so you can see that as as a percentage of their balance sheet as a country, and that's what the gross domestic product is. You know, you look at uh, all the money your country is making by selling pasta and olives and all the great things that um in wines, as Italy has to say, that's all. So that's all a positive. But you have this drain, this negative ball and chain that is their pension system. Okay, um, and so they do it on a percentile basis right here. See, Ireland figured it out a long time. They said, screw it. Okay, okay. So there's gonna have to be a transition, okay? And here, China um, decided, okay, uh, we we are we need to make this transition now, okay? All right. So this was in the 1990s again because they had they had such an enormous over 65 population. You know, you're talking 1.4 billion people, all right? And so um, they used to have what's called they called the cradle to grave support, okay? So there was guaranteed government support. It may not be super lucrative, but it was guaranteed, okay, by the state, okay? It's like their social security system, okay? Um, and um, so what they want to do now, and if you if you read through this, is yes, we're going to still provide the pension, but it cannot be 100% of your support. They're, they they the ear market to be maybe 20% of your income as an older person, okay? And the rest, okay, is going to become but from your savings. So we're going to try to talk about this. So I have my defined contribution. So every month I take money that I earn, all right, as my hourly wage, if you will, okay, my monthly wage for being a professor. I take a big chunk of that out and I put it away into my retirement plan. It's completely funded by me, okay? Um, and uh, so that's my I define how much of the contribution I want to I want to make and in and, and the U.S. creates a tax incentive so that um, so that I'll do it. OK, so it's a way of reducing my taxable income this year. And then when I access it, then I will be taxed on that money. And, you know, I'm probably when I'm in my 70s, not going to spend as much. So it'll become out at a lower taxable rate. You guys are going to learn all about this. OK. So yeah, that's this is what China did. You know why is that? Well, look what happened. Okay, all right. So we're looking at again. This is the number of workers that have to pay for this pension, right? This guaranteed income that somebody had if they retired. Okay, so we see here in the 80s. Okay, we look at you know the millions of people that are in retirement age. Okay, that are pensioners. Okay, that 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 need their Chinese version of Social Security, and you see it just went right here. All right, so it went from you know um, eight million to fifty million here in two thousand uh, by two thousand five. Okay, um, it was probably now closer to seventy million. Okay, um, and then you compare these millions of people that are taking the checks from the government to the millions of people. That are working, that a percentage of their paycheck is going to go in to fund this, because there is these pension systems are not, you know, flush, okay, um, with money, and you're just, you know, uh, taking the the, the um, interest income from all the investments and, and giving it to the pensioners. No, it is a kind of go as you pay system, you know. So um, so basically, you take people's out of the paychecks and give it right to them, okay. And what has happened here? The, the the ratio of workers to pay these pensioners, you see, it's going down, 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 down. These guys still need the same income, so we're gonna have to take more money, more tax out of these guys' paychecks to pay for this income. And that was a big deal, and it's happening 
you know, worldwide. So that's a huge, huge economic challenge, okay? All right, um, and so you kind of, kind of look through this and you look at the, the financial markets, okay? Um, now, um, uh, when we look at, again at the, the, the you know, the, this pension thing that we're talking about here, we look at these countries right here, okay? And um, so, so for example, in Norway, um, they had a 20% tax rate, okay? So I, what I did is I just kind of quickly went in here and I kind of looked at, um, this is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, a huge organization of about almost 20 countries. And I just wanted to see how we stack up in terms of how much um, on average, on average, you look at our entire population, um, we look at everything, okay, our federal income tax, our social security tax, our Medicare tax, our state tax, you know, on average, um, we see here that in the U.S. we're about 30% of our, um, uh, our earned income goes as taxes to pay for services, not just for the stuff for the old people, but for roads and sewers and, you know, paying Congress and all that kind of crap, okay? Um, you see over here, you know, look at Belgium and and, um, um, and Germany and Austria and France and Italy. You see, at, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a much higher percentage, okay? Almost twice as much of their paycheck goes to pay for these government services. So you see how it all stacks up right in here, okay? This is New Zealand right here. This is Mexico. So you can see, you know, where we stack up. So we're actually on a... On on a pretty good end, you know, I know that's a big political thing, taxation, blah, 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 you know, but, you know, compared to most, we do pretty well, okay, awesome, all righty, so um, let's go back here to where we're at, okay, um, so, so um, if we don't want to be paying for pensions, then we got to create, you know, incentives, and how hopefully people will um, uh, uh, um, be investing, like I said, so I take a chuck my paycheck i put it in to uh my 401k uh you guys can do iras and, and and roth iras we'll talk about that these you know you can do it you know if you're working right now and um so how do we stack up you know so sweden okay um stock is an individual ownership of a single company mutual funds is a bundle of, of a category that we're going to learn about you know so let's say you're a tech person okay so you have a, a tech bundle of mutual funds um with maybe 5,000 companies that come under that category. And then it spreads your risk, okay? All right, and and there's a way of, we'll show you later, of, 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 of when you're younger, increasing your risk, but also getting a, maybe a better, you know, with that risk, you can get a much better return on the investment. Or when you get older, you're a little bit safer in terms of your mutual funds, okay? All right, so, um, so that's the percent of households, you know, in Sweden, Denmark, et cetera, that have this type of, to Greece and Spain and Italy, nobody. Why is that? Uh, that's right, because they like to hand out pensions like candy, okay? So there's no incentive, okay? So I can do uh, what uh, percentage, let's see here. Obviously, I've been searching a lot of Rona shit, so what percentage of U.S. households have mutual invest. How about invest in mutual funds? Sorry. Boom. Okay. All right. So we'll go right in here. Take a look here. All right. And so we see that, you know, our country has the interest has grown. It's kind of stagnant here, about 45%. We're going to learn later on um, that uh, while 45% are invested, when we look at um, um, in our country right now, okay, and we we look at uh, how much pe money people have um, in the age range of uh, about 45 to 55 years of age, um, and we look at the median, we stack up all the people in that age range. Millions and millions of people, okay? The median is $16,000. You may have mutual funds, but $16,000 is not going to cut it, okay? All right. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Um, so uh, we shift this age range over here for labor. That's a big one. The other thing is capital, okay? So capital is investments is what I'm doing. Take your money and invest 
your capital, buy real estate, whatever it is you, you know, so that's your, your, your sole source of income should not be labor income. Okay. But for many it is. And so we're, we are moving this green bar to the right, to the right, to the right. And then that's happening in a lot of countries. Okay. Um, you can't just fall out of the, um, labor market right here, because guess what? You still have needs. You still consume, you still need to spend. Okay. So that's what's happening right here. This right here, okay, this is you guys in college, okay? You're consuming all of your parents' assets, okay? All right, and then hopefully you get a great job and then you're in the labor market. So this actually has shifted to the right as well because it's harder and harder to get a job and you need more and more qualifications. All right, very cool. These are other organizations that are looking at all this stuff. Um, so uh, it gives you a feel for what's going on. Um, so. You would be taking your test right there. Don't forget about that, okay? Because I opened it up twice. And then you come down here and you now answer the discussion question, okay? And again, it looks at this transition, okay? Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're kind of reiterating this concept, okay? Globally, okay, where um, um, fewer and fewer births, okay? Uh, a shrinking working age population but a growing dependent population in terms of aging, okay? And uh, again, the global imperative, you know, um, France had a long time to think about this, okay? Um, uh, Sweden had a long time. We had a reasonably long time, you know. Um, uh, Japan, they didn't, okay? So they had to make big, big policy changes immediately. And then we have these other countries, okay, um, you know, that are, are licking their wounds right now trying to figure it out, okay? Um, Raw numbers, big numbers, obviously China and India have a lot to grapple with right here. And then we come down here and I want you to watch a couple of really cool videos about um, the pain that this is, that is inflicted in Japan, okay? Uh, again, people work and work and work. There's no, <laughs> I love this thing, Japan is like all work, no sex means no future, okay? So they're, they're not, People are not getting buried. People are not having children, and uh, there's a there's a consequence to that in terms of of um, the economic well-being of the country. You need people to work, okay, and also in terms of caring for older people. And so this is um, uh, a look into um, uh, 2012 video about um, steps that are being taken. Uh, by the older people, by the country, even things like robotics, okay? And then this is a cool 2017 article. If you have a subscription business insider, you can look at it right here. If not, it, it um, is a PDF file. You just kind of look it over, okay? And uh, and then comment, comment, comment based on this prompt, okay? And what you think is going on. All right, guys, peace, okay? Think of the poor people in New Orleans. Um, the poor people in, in Afghanistan, you know, this this is in, in sh the poor people with with um, COVID. You know, this is a really tough time in the world, you know, and, uh, um, you know, again, be grateful for, for who you are and where you're at. All right, guys. Peace. We'll see you next time.